Let's talk about the NHS pensions. This of course is the retirement fund for those amazing hard workers that work day and night in such challenging environments. So without further ado, I'm Kozan from Financial Madness, helping you be better with your money. On the 1st of April 2015, there was a significant shakeup in how the pension scheme was handled in the NHS. There are actually three different pension schemes that are currently running at the moment. However, only one of them will you be contributing to. And which one really depends on when you joined the NHS pension scheme. But if you are unsure, I would encourage you to speak with your HR or payroll department for further information. Because there is a possible complication that you may actually be enrolled in more than one of these pension schemes. This is likely due because you left NHS in the past under a different scheme and then when you rejoined you were automatically enrolled in the current 2015 or 2008 pension scheme. I am going to be breaking down all three schemes however I will be paying particular attention to the current scheme which is known as the 2015 scheme. So looking at the two older schemes which are known as the 1995 and 2008 scheme these are defined benefit schemes or typically known as final salary so they give the retirees a final salary pension for life. Now the calculation on how they determine what this final salary is does vary depending on which scheme you're on and I'll touch a bit on that a little bit later on but it typically depends on your final few years of service. Now this differs to the current scheme which is known as the 2015 scheme dubbed because it was introduced on the 1st of April 2015. Now this is still a defined benefit scheme however it is based on career averages that is why it's also known as the career average revalued scheme or care for short. Now this pays you a final salary based on your average career earnings and we'll go into the mathematics on this a little bit later on. When you start working for the NHS you are now automatically enrolled in the pension scheme. Now this is a voluntary scheme so you are able to opt out however like with all pension schemes I would strongly suggest against doing this and more often than not your later self will likely thank you for never leaving your private pension scheme and that is because when we do hit retirement we do need a way to fund our lifestyle when we stop working and a private pension is a great way to finance that living if we don't have a big enough private pension we're likely to see a drastic decrease in our standard of living or we will probably have have to work in our later years than we would preferably want to. That isn't to say there isn't a viable reason as to why you would want to leave your pension. However, I would suggest you seek out financial advice or do a lot of your own research before you take such a serious decision. So the amount you contribute to your pension is determined by your annual salary and the contribution rates that I'm about to mention have been fixed from April 2015 all the way up to March 2021 which I know is only a month away however having looked online there doesn't seem to be any new information about what the new contribution rates will look like after the 31st of March 2021 so I would encourage you to check out the government website for up-to-date information and I'll put a link in the description box down below so you can check that out. Now, as you can see from the table, this shows the contribution rates to your pension depending on your income. The NHS actually class this as pensionable income, but this essentially means any fixed income that you get from the NHS, like your annual salary. That's why I called it annual salary a little bit earlier. Things like overtime are typically not classed as pensionable, so it won't be included in these calculations unless it has been stated to you otherwise. So as you can see here, depending on your income, you can be contributing between 5% to 14%. 0.5% to your pension pot. However, it is really important to note that any money that you contribute to your pension is not taxable and you're given a certain amount of tax relief depending on your income bracket, which actually means you're only ever contributing between 4 to 8.7% of your income to your pension pot because of the way this tax relief works. So rather it being really between 5 to and 14.5%, you're only really going to be contributing 4 to 8.7% because of the way the tax relief works when you contribute to your pension pot. As of the 1st of April 2019, your employer or the NHS will also be contributing 20.68% of your salary into the pension scheme. Now this is considerably higher than any other sector in the UK economy. However, because most pension schemes run under the defined contribution scheme, which is different to the defined benefit scheme that the NHS work, the fact that
fact that your employer is actually contributing such a high amount to the pension pot, this doesn't actually have a direct impact on you. And I'll try and explain this a little bit better. So if we're comparing with other private pensions that work under the defined contribution scheme, how this works is that any contributions that you make goes into a pot of money and this pot of money is then invested in the market and then once you hit the retirement age, you then use this pot of money to fund your retirement years. Now comparing this to the NHS, which works on the defined benefit scheme, which means that depending on your salary and your years of contribution, this will determine your final salary for life after you hit retirement. So the money that you and your employers contribute to the pension is really just to keep the cogs working in this massive pension machine. You don't get any of the direct impacts. So what I'm trying to say is unlike the defined contribution scheme where you are directly impacted by how much you and your employer contribute to the pension pot, the NHS pension is determined by your salary and your years of contribution. And I'll explain how much you take home a little bit later on. By the way, if you are enjoying this video so far, please be sure to like, comment and subscribe with notification bell on. I release a video every single Monday talking about all things personal finance with the ultimate aim of helping you be better with your money. So when can you gain access to the NHS pension? So you get your pension pension at what is called the normal state pension age. Now this doesn't mean the earliest date at which you can claim your pension. If you take out your pension before the normal pension age and the earliest you can do that is when you reach the age of 55 currently, the benefits from your pension will be reduced to cover the fact that you will be having your pension for a longer period of time than if you were to wait until your normal pension age. So the normal pension age does differ between schemes. In the 1995 scheme, the pension pension age is 60, in 2008 it is 65 and from the 2015 scheme the pension is currently following the state pension age which depending on which year you're born is currently between 66 and 68. Obviously this can change in the future however it can never be less than 65. One thing to note is that if you do have a pension with more than one of these schemes you can claim them at different times. So for example say if I started working for the NHS and I was enrolled in the 2008 scheme and then I left and then I came back and then I was enrolled in the 2015 scheme I can claim on my 2008 scheme when I reach the age of 65 and then once I reach 68 which would be my state pension age I can then claim on the 2015 scheme cool so let's get into the juicy stuff let's see how much money we can earn from the pension scheme now with this I'm really going to focus on the 2015 version but I will put some illustrative examples for the 2008 and the 1995 version now under the 2015 15 scheme, the way that your final pension is calculated is based on two different things. One called the build-up rate and the second is the re-evaluation rate. The build-up rate is currently 1 54th of your annual income. So every year your pension will grow by 1 54th of your annual income. This sounds really confusing, so I will put this into an example in a little bit, so bear with me on this. Now, the second thing that your pension is calculated on is something called a re-evaluation rate, which is a rate which will see your pension increase by every year until you retire or when you leave the NHS. Now, this rate is determined by the rate of inflation plus 1.5%. And that's because if your money is staying in cash over time, it would lose in value because the price of everything else is going up because of inflation so this increase annually will make sure that your money is increasing at the rate of inflation plus 1.5 percent so in this table i've provided a quick example of how the build-up rate and the re-evaluation rate works to determine your final pension scheme i have simplified it slightly by making sure that the salary is constant at twenty thousand pounds obviously in a typical career within the nhs you are likely to see the salary fluctuate over time usually it goes on the increase and with the inflation rate, I'm just going to keep it at 2%. So plus 1.5%, which gives us a re-evaluation rate of 3.5%. I'm going to keep that constant throughout this example as well. Now taking year one, where we have a salary, of course, of £20,000, our build-up rate, which is worked out to be 1 54th of this amount, comes to £370.37. Now this means that after the end of year one, our pension, our total pension pot is £370.37, which meant if I were to retire here and now, I would have £370 for life 
in this pension scheme. So moving on to year two, where I still have 20,000 pounds as my salary. Uh, my pension pot stands at 370 pounds and 37 pence from my previous year. However, now my pension will be growing by my build up rate, but now also my re-evaluation rate because one year has passed and it needs to be adjusted for inflation. This gives me an increase of 383 pounds and 33 pence. So at the end of year two, my pension pot will be 753 pounds and 70 pence. Now, again, if I was to leave here and there, my final salary would be 753 pounds and 70 pounds per year until the day I die. Now, I'm not gonna go through this year on year because the process is basically the same, but hopefully you've understood it. So here in year three, if I do the exact same thing, the money will be 1,150, year four, 1,561, and all the way up to year 25, if all things stay the same, my final salary annually would be 14,425 pounds and 87 pence. So hopefully this is giving you a good indication of how the 2015 pension scheme works. I will put on the screen now some examples for the 1995 and the 2008 scheme. So please pause now if you wanna have a quick read through on how that works too. So to wrap up, I just want to provide some benefits when it comes to the NHS pension. So the first one being is that you are getting a guaranteed income for life. Now this is a really, really rare find when you are looking at other sectors in the UK economy. As I mentioned before, most companies go with the new defined contributions approach because it is more cost effective for them. It is very rare that you will find a sector just purely offering defined benefit schemes. So this is one of the biggest benefits when it comes to the NHS pension. Now the second benefit is that you also have the flexibility to take out some of your pension as a tax-free lump sum. This will of course have an impact on your final salary. However, it is good to know that the flexibility is there if you are in need of some lump sum cash. Number three is that the scheme will also continue to pay out to your spouse or civil partner if you happen to pass away before they do. Important to note that the rate that they will be getting will be a reduced rate than if you were getting it yourself. Number four, because it is a defined benefits plan, the pension that you're getting isn't determined by the ups and downs of the stock market, unlike the defined contribution scheme. So if you are someone that doesn't have so much confidence within the stock market, this is obviously a great benefit to you. However, just on a side note, if you are someone that does feel like that, I would encourage you to do some further reading or check out some of my earlier videos videos when it comes to investing and just get into the mindset of understanding how the stock market works and how you can see that if you are investing in the long term in the stock market it does reap large rewards. And fifth and finally your pension does have a measure to go against inflation. As I mentioned the re-evaluation rate increases your salary based on the CPI plus 1.5%. Of course that is it for this week's episode. Hopefully I've clearly explained how the NHS pension works. Obviously if you do have any further questions let me know in the comment section down below. I'll be happy to answer them for you. Uh, pensions are a really vital tool for our personal finance journey to finance our retirement lives. So if you are someone that is debating about whether to enroll or uh, opt out of the pension scheme, I do really encourage anyone that is in that mindset to do further research and seek out financial advice if they want to do so. But yeah, anyway, if you did find this video really useful, I would really appreciate if you smash that like button. That does wonders for the YouTube algorithm and the growth of my channel because I am still a very small channel and the more likes and comments that you guys can give me the more people can see my content and hopefully learn from this as well and as always i release a video every single monday so if you want to keep up to date with those hit the subscribe button as well see you later